Jack Lombardi the second? Yes, sir. So how did you begin your career into politics? How did I begin my career into politics? Well, I'd like to correct you. I don't have a career in politics. I never ever wanted a career in politics. You know, quite frankly, I really don't like politics, to be really honest with you. And I don't like a lot of politicians either. Uh, I'm just a citizen, uh, a dad who started looking around at the direction of our country and said, somebody's got to do something. And I believe President Trump was the answer. He came in and he started to... <sighs> He started to shed a spotlight on many of the issues that I was seeing. And that made me start uh, paying attention to him. I've been a businessman for the last 26 years of my life. So he spoke my language. And when Adam Kinzinger of Illinois decided he was going to vote to impeach President Donald Trump after President Trump had paid attention to the issues that I was seeing, um, you know, I had to do something. So I wound up filing for U.S. Congress and um, got into the race and, um, you know, had to learn a lot, very little time. But then with the pandemic, I started to realize in Illinois, Illinois Democrats and National Democrats, but Illinois Democrats specifically were using the pandemic as a cloak to install just uh, bad policy and, and just, just power grab and, you know, forcing everyone to shut down their businesses, but big box stores, I mean, those were okay. And they didn't want businesses to restart. And, and President Trump was trying to restart the economy. And and Democrats were not. And it really showed, they really showed their hand. And so I would guess that that's what solidified my presence in U.S. politics, Illinois politics, and just U.S. politics as a whole, was um, Democrats overplaying their hand in, in exposing what their, you know, their platform is about. Okay. And where do you hope your career will be in the next five to 10 years? I hope that uh, many of the issues that I've spoke about, the power, Democrat power grab, are addressed and I'm not involved with politics anymore. Uh, you know, somebody has to, you know, American citizens have to start stepping up in spectacular ways that they never have before to start address addressing issues that if we were to look in our history books have always led to a very awful outcome for the citizenship. So in 10 years, I hope that there's not too much for me to have to get involved in. Um, if you followed me, then you'll know that I spend most of my time calling BS uh, and I'll do it to Republicans too. If you lie to the American citizen, about the status of our country, about bills, about the way that this country is being ran and how our taxpayer dollars are being spent, I will call you out on it, regardless of who you are. It doesn't matter who you are to me. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm from a working class family, blue collar father that went to work every day. He, you know, saved his money. He, we lived well within our means paid a little bit of taxes and want to be left to hell alone. We don't want our government in our bedroom. We don't want our government in our schools. We don't want our, our government in our church. We just want to be left alone to live our lives. And so if these issues are addressed, then there's really not much more for me to, to really call BS on. But if there is, I'll still be around. So do you think that the media is honest in their coverage of politicians? And if not, why and how are they dishonest? No, they're not just they're dishonest to the core. Um, at this point, my view of legacy media is uh, just propaganda wings of whatever party that they're associated to. But I would more specifically say that legacy media is attached to the establishment, which is 
slow walking us, handing us over to China for China to become the new world global leader. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm a little too old to learn Mandarin. So I'm not trying to learn another language. I already know two, don't need to learn a third one. Um, and how are they dishonest? I mean, it's very clear in here. Let's roll back. So when President Trump started running, I was paying attention to him because he was speaking my language. I liked that he was an entrepreneur. I didn't like Hillary Clinton because she I felt is a very dishonest career politician who is in love with the the metrics of politics and not what's best for the American people. So I really paid a pe- attention to President Trump. And I would see my friends on Facebook who didn't like President Trump's persona, didn't like um, just a, his his you know the way he came off. They would post all these awful things about him, and I was like, "Wow, that's really interesting." That uh, they're making all these claims against President or against candidate Trump. Um. And I would go listen and I was like, oh, man, you know, man, that's that's pretty compelling. And I, I listened to it. And I said, man, maybe President Trump isn't who he says he is. And then what I started to do is watch President Trump's interviews. Live. And I, as I was working, I'd have another monitor on and I would watch and listen to what he said very specifically. And then I started noticing Later in the day, my friends would post this stuff, news, you know, like CNN, MSN, MSNBC, uh, and ABC, all of them would take whatever he said out of context or misrepresent what he said. What do you think of Biden's time as president versus Trump's time as president? Biden's time as president was to re-implement what Obama had put in play that goes along with globalist control and a globalist agenda. President Trump, his presidency was more about American excellence and national sovereignty. And it's very clear that the that the globalists are who's behind the nonstop attacks of President Trump, of which the globalists are also control many of the establishment Republicans that we see in the House and Senate. 